So for several years now, since about 2015 to be exact, I've been able to get Blizzard games completely for free and even in-game items without paying a single cent thanks in large part to the strategies I'm about to share in today's video. This includes games like the deluxe editions of every World of Warcraft expansion since Worlds of Draenor, other Blizzard games like Overwatch and Diablo 2 Resurrected, even years of maintaining a World of Warcraft monthly subscription on top of all the other in-game items and cosmetics I bought, plus I actually have a ton left over Battle.net balance ready to spend on future games and other in-game items and battle passes like for Overwatch 2 and also my most anticipated game, Diablo 4. Now this strategy is 100% supported by Blizzard and is something that they came up with themselves, originally intended as a way to combat things like third-party sellers of in-game gold and in-game items of World of Warcraft. And the gist of this strategy is to basically earn and then convert in-game World of Warcraft gold into Battle.net Balance. And again, this is done completely through Blizzard's own systems. And it does mean that you will have to play World of Warcraft and generally the latest expansion at that to be able to be the most efficient in earning gold to not only sustain your World of Warcraft subscription to then be able to earn even more gold by being able to play the game, right? But then also be able to earn a surplus of in-game gold to then convert into Battle.net Balance like what I'm doing to be able to use for other Blizzard games and in-game cosmetics and things like that. Now, if you're determined to not touch World of Warcraft with a 10-foot pole, then this method is probably not for you. But if you've never tried World of Warcraft and you're sort of on the fence, in that you're willing to give this game a try to see whether you enjoy the game, and not only that, be able to also enjoy the fact that the effort you put into World of Warcraft can actually spill over into helping you buy and sustain other games like even Overwatch 2 with its season passes and Diablo 4 likely with its own forms of monetization as well, which is definitely going to be my plan. And with the simple strategies I'm going to cover in today's video, you actually only need to progress your characters mainly up to a certain point to be able to set them up for optimal gold making, which isn't really that much effort to get set up with to begin with. If you're able to do that, then a lot of the gold making and thus turning that into Battle.net Balance will actually become a very easy, and not only that, but even almost passive process. And so what that means is if you like to spend a lot more time playing other games outside of World of Warcraft, you'll still be able to, provided that you've set up your characters properly in World of Warcraft, spend only a minimal amount of time in this game, and be able to thoroughly play your favorite Activision or Blizzard games for free essentially. And so if any of this interests you, stay a while and listen, and let's get right into the guide. I dream and the world trembles. So first, let's address the bare minimum you need to be able to begin the strategy in terms of the cost associated to purchasing the most recent version of retail or modern World of Warcraft to be able to earn gold within the game and then be able to turn that gold into battle and balance, right? So you'll actually have to own the game, of course, and also perhaps purchase a couple of months of subscription because before you earn gold, you won't be able to convert anything into balance and balance. So you will have to spend actual real money to subscribe to the game at least for the first month or two. By the way, retail or modern World of Warcraft is not to be confused with the classic versions of World of Warcraft, the most recent one being Classic Wrath of the Lich King, which is a sort of re-release of an older version of World of Warcraft, which is coming out very soon. And by maintaining a World of Warcraft subscription, you can actually play any version of World of Warcraft, but for retail, you do have to purchase the latest expansion to be able to play it. However, for the classic versions, all you need is to maintain your WoW subscription, which means means if you actually make enough gold to sustain your World of Warcraft subscription through retail WoW and with my strategies ideally spend minimal time on that, you'll still be able to maintain a WoW subscription to be able to play classic World of Warcraft if that's what you mainly want to do. Now there are a couple of ways to go about this depending on whether you want to start the strategy in the current expansion Shadowlands or if you want to wait until Dragonflight which will be out in roughly two to two and a half months if the leaks are any indication. 
So first, if you actually want to start making some gold right now, for example, if your main game is going to be, say, Overwatch 2 or Diablo 4, which isn't going to be out just yet, well, with Overwatch 2 coming out quite soon, and you want to actually jump into the latest version, or the current version, rather, of World of Warcraft to start making some gold, and then racking in some of that Battle.net balance before you actually spend a lot more time and, you know, jumping into your main game, then you can definitely consider picking up Shadowlands right now which again is the current version of World of Warcraft. And I would also highly recommend picking up the next expansion, Dragonflight, which will likely be out in two and a half to three months, especially since at the start of any WoW expansion, that's usually the best and most efficient chance to make gold in the game. And for that, my current recommendation is to get the World of Warcraft Complete Collection, which consists of both Shadowlands and Dragonflight, and the Epic Edition, which will actually give you some level boosts as well and thus saving you extra time if you actually want that. Um, you don't have to and you can just purchase the basic editions of both which will cost you a bit less. But I do recommend the heroic edition because you'll actually get two level boosts. One to um, max level right now and one to level 50, the current max level being 60. So you have one level 60 and one level 50 right off the bat with the max level in Dragonflight being level 70. So you actually have two characters that are somewhat close to max level by the time Dragonflight starts. And an alternative would be just to start playing once the Dragonflight expansion drops, for which you'll actually only have to spend the cost for the expansion itself, whether you get the base or heroic or even epic edition. Although I would not really recommend the highest tier, the epic edition, because all you're really getting is some extra game time, which could be somewhat worth it, but um, you'll actually be getting a lot of cosmetics, which if your main game isn't going to be retail World of Warcraft, I don't imagine you'd care too much about about these in-game cosmetics. And again, if you do have some extra time on your hands before some of these upcoming game releases, you can also consider picking up Shadowlands, which is again the current expansion. And for this, I would probably recommend the base edition, unless you wanted to uh, get the character boost or level boost at level 50 with the heroic edition. But again, if you do know that you want to eventually play Dragonflight as well, I would recommend getting the complete collection instead. Now when it comes to subscribing to World of Warcraft, which you'll actually also need to be able to play the game because WoW is an MMO, there are actually a few options to consider. The first one being just buying one or two months at a slightly higher rate at $15 a month. If you go for three months at once, you actually save, um, I think it's $1 per month, yes. And even though for the six months option, you technically save $2 per month compared to the one month option, I definitely don't think you'll need to subscribe for that long before you'll be able to set up the in-game goal making machine, so to speak, to be able to sustain your subscription and even earn additional balance to be able to buy other stuff. So my recommendation would be to buy not more than three months, provided that you have enough time to spend in the game to be able to set up your goal making. And um, this actually shouldn't take that much effort anyway, so three months should be sufficient. And in fact, in my opinion and experience, I definitely think that you can pull this off within one month in that you can have a max level character even without necessarily getting some of the level boosts that come with certain packages or versions of the game. You'll be able to level to max level and then be able to set up the bare minimum needed for gold making to sustain not only your wild subscription but also break even from your purchasing you know costs from buying the game and all that and then be able to keep sustaining additional and adding to actually balance balance moving forward especially once you get the hang of things and it's really not that difficult or complicated as a lot of patterns keep repeating themselves in world of crap regardless of if you know, any new versions of the game come out, you're largely still utilizing the same or very similar strategies as I will lay out in today's video. But first, for a couple of bits of important optimization before you even start playing World of Warcraft, and it's that, first of all, you want to make sure that your computer can run the game adequately. Uh, fortunately, World of Warcraft is not very graphically or CPU intensive, so that means usually older devices or uh, even budget devices, computers can run them. And um, however, the uh, space that you'll need is about 80 gigabytes as of the game's current version. You might need a bit more with Dragonflight. So I would save about 100 gigabytes for the game at least. And what else you need is to download some add-ons to help you streamline 
uh, certain things within the game, right? Such as leveling and of course making gold. And to get add-ons for World of Warcraft, which are sort of third-party apps and softwares that people have developed, players have made to make the game more convenient or to customize it in certain ways that also comply with the game's uh, terms of service, so they're perfectly fine to use and for the most part, you can actually go to Google and search for CurseForge, download this software, and with CurseForge, you can then search for various types of add-ons that you want to uh, use within World of Warcraft depending on how you want to customize it. The main ones that I recommend is, first of all, you want to get Trade Skill Master. With this add-on alone, you'll be able to much more easily make gold with the professions within the game. The professions being things like crafting and gathering items that you know each character can utilize to make gold. And Trade Skill Master, the add-on, will help you greatly in that regard. And in addition to downloading the Trade Skill Master add-on, you also want to go over to Google and search for Trade Skill Master to go over to their own uh, website to download the Trade Skill Master app as well. And this is a desktop app for your PC. And what it does is it sort of synchronizes with the in-game Trade Skill Master add-on to be able to fetch live prices from the in-game World of Warcraft auction house, which will then very easily uh, allow you to craft items or decide rather which items to craft based on the live prices on the auction house and tell you what exactly uh, or whether a certain item is worth crafting and how much profit you'll make and thus simplifying the entire crafting process without you having to dive deep into and do research on the prices on the auction house and really monitor that because the apps and the, uh, the desktop app and the add-on actually helps do that for you. And that is really the only mandatory add-on that I recommend for today's strategies. However, for another sort of honorable mention, especially if you want to do some leveling, for example, if you purchased a version of the game that doesn't come with a level boost and you want to level as quickly and as efficiently as possible, then I would recommend downloading Azeroth Autopilot, the add-on, which will help you save a bit of time by uh, skipping cutscenes within the game and also accepting quests more instantly or quickly and also giving you pointers in terms of where to go, which quests to accept and um, essentially how to optimize your leveling route. But if you, even if you don't get an add-on for that, there are tons of uh, guides online on YouTube and on Google for optimal leveling routes. But before you start leveling or even create a character for that matter, you want to actually pick a realm or server which is more ideal for making gold. And generally what this means is a server that has a higher population would usually be better because that generally means that it is quicker for your items to sell in that there are going to be more buyers on the auction house, right? Even compared to the increased number of like crafters and sellers, the number of buyers usually greatly exceeds that of the sellers on these higher population servers and thus if it's easy and quick to be able to sell things, you won't really have to keep logging to the game and reposting your auctions and so on and so forth as you would have to on smaller realms or servers. And to find out how large the population of each server roughly is, you can head over to this website called wowprogress.com and then sort by population. So for example, on US Rao realms, the largest uh, realm is Area 52. I'm personally on um, Kill Jaden, which is about within rank 20. Um, you can also check out EU realms, but generally I think within the top 20 or so is going to be a decent choice. Then once you pick your server, for example, again, I am on Kill Jaden, you can actually just go ahead and create your character. It doesn't really matter which class you pick, although if I had to pick the most efficient, I guess, gold making class it would probably be the Druid because they have the ability to um, morph into a flying form instantly, whereas other classes have to cast um, they're flying mount, which takes very, very slightly longer. And besides picking your class, you also have to pick your fashion, right? Horde or Alliance. Although it doesn't really matter as well, you can literally just pick what you prefer or the aesthetic you prefer as the auction houses are now connected and linked anyway. So it doesn't really affect your goal making. Then once you've created your character, if you have a level boost from one of the deluxe editions, whether it be to level 50 or level 60, well, if you use the level 60 one, you won't have to level anymore as you'll be uh, max level at least as of Shadowlands, although when Dragonflight hits, you will be able to uh, start leveling again into Dragonflight. And um, if you use the level 50 boost, you'll be able to level in the Shadowlands. And if you don't pick up any of the character boosts, you can just start fresh. From levels 1 to 10, it'll be really self-explanatory in the starting zone and it'll give you a tutorial as well 
on how to play your class and how to play the game in general in case you're not super familiar and then once you hit level 10 that's when the real sort of leveling starts but before even you start going into the leveling process after that you want to head to your capital city any of the capital cities actually of your faction to pick up two gathering professions Generally, mining and herbalism are the easiest and best, so you can just earn slightly more extra gold as you level at no additional effort. Now, there are a lot of different leveling routes after level 10 that you can pick from, but not all of them are essentially created equal, with some of them being significantly faster than the others. In general, the Warlords of Draenor expansion is going to be the fastest way to level up, so what you want to do is to pick the Chromie time leveling path as you hit level 10, and then go and talk to Chromie in your capital city to then select the expansion of choice. In this case, I would recommend, again, Warlords of Draenor to level up it. Alternatively, and I would actually recommend the second path, and that would be to do a couple more things and level in a couple of select zones before setting foot into World of Draenor. And this is actually a leveling route devised by certain uh, speed running world record holders. So I actually link their very simple guides below, including some helpful YouTube leveling guides by Kraken Latte. Now, one thing to keep in mind though is that when Dragonflight comes out, the route might change slightly because of a new level cap and the fact that you don't actually have to level within the Shadowlands anymore, right? So currently, how it works is once you get to level 50 in whatever old expansion or content that you're leveling in, you'll actually be booted out of Chromie time and then have to level within the Shadowlands because that's the current expansion, right? To go from level 50 to 60. And thus, when Dragonflight comes out, you can actually go from level 10 to 60 in Chromie time, again, in any expansion of your choice, like World of the Draenor, which generally is really efficient, right? However, there is an exception to this, which is if it's your very first character that you're leveling up, you will have to level from 10 to 60 in the Battle for Azeroth expansion instead of Shadowlands. So you're forced to level in Battle for Azeroth, and you can definitely just refer to the links I have below because these guides will be up to date when Dragonflight comes out for the most optimal leveling routes, even within Battle for Azeroth. And with that, so what are some of the most efficient and also easiest ways of making gold specifically for the purpose of converting your gold not only into your WoW subscription to maintain it, which by the way also allows you to play other versions of World of Warcraft like WoW Classic if that's what you want to do, but besides that, if you exceed that gold amount, you can also save up additional battle net balance to be able to purchase other, say, in-game items, things like season passes for Overwatch, and even other Blizzard or Activision games. And more specifically, what you'll actually need to do is to go into the major cities within the game and this can only be done within the game, talk to the auctioneer or any auctioneer within these cities which can be pretty easily found and then go to the WoW token tab to actually be able to buy these WoW tokens with gold as you can see here. And then once you do that for each WoW token that you have, you actually have a physical so to speak in-game item in your inventory which if you then right click you can then convert into actual battle and balance at the rate of one token to $15 of battle and balance. Or if you just keep it in your inventory, you can also use it to renew your subscription after your subscription runs out just by logging into the game and then clicking yes to consume a WoW token from your inventory to extend your subscription by one month. Right now though, the WoW token prices are slightly more expensive than what I had shown on my recording just now. And this is very likely due to the fact that not only is Wrath of the Lich King Classic coming out very soon, but so is Overwatch 2. And thus it is important to know that WoW token prices can fluctuate. For example, it'll be higher usually if there are any major game announcements or releases coming up or even things like bundles, whereas it'll slightly be relatively lower when there are fewer of these announcements around that time. And another thing you notice that depending on the region as well, the prices are greatly different, but this doesn't actually matter as much as people would probably think because, uh, for example, in Europe, the wild token prices are a bit higher, but at the same time, their um, auction house and the gold that you can make through the auction house is generally higher as well. So relatively speaking, the ability for you to earn gold to be able to buy a WoW token isn't drastically different between at least US and um, EU regions. And as for the timing of buying WoW tokens, you definitely ideally want to be buying at relatively lower prices, right? But um, the thing is, this is very hard to predict because oftentimes uh, Blizzard will announce a new, say, bundle or some kind of game or some kind of you know new in-game item out of the blue, which will spike WoW token prices. So what I generally like to do, and I think is a good 
you know, overall general practice is just to sort of average out and buy WoW tokens over time. Perhaps buying slightly more WoW tokens when you think that the prices are a bit lower compared to before. And another crucial thing about WoW tokens to keep track of is the price of a WoW token is essentially how much you'll need to earn per month at the very least to be able to maintain a WoW subscription, right? Because again, one WoW token converts into one month of a WoW sub. And so in other words, if you divide the price of a WoW token by 30, this will actually equate to the minimum amount of gold you need to make per day. And again, this will sort of depend on whether or not the WoW token prices will fluctuate, but roughly it'll be the amount of gold you'll need to earn per day at the minimum to maintain your WoW sub. For example, if right now the US WoW token price is at 220k, which again is sort of on the higher end, previously it was as low as 180 something thousand. But anyway, using the current price as an example, if we divide 220,000 gold by 30, uh, it'll equal to somewhere around 7.3 thousand, meaning that th that is the minimum amount of gold you should earn on your account per day on average to be able to at least maintain your WoW subscription. And definitely you want to be able to earn more so that you eventually have enough to um, add up and spill out of your WoW subscription to be able to convert the extra gold into uh, battle net balance to be able to buy the other stuff, right? And while this amount of gold can seem somewhat intimidating for especially newer and more inexperienced players, I definitely think that, and in my experience over the years in fact, um, that it is fairly easy to be able to earn this much gold if you actually use the right methods. Right now though, towards the end of Shadowlands, because people are anticipating Dragonflight, uh, less people are playing and thus the auction house can be a bit slow and less people are interested in buying stuff for Shadowlands because they know that the stuff like gear or you know consumables might become useless essentially when a new expansion comes out and thus it is a bit harder to make gold right now relatively speaking. Again, um, the end of the expansion is usually the hardest time to do so because again people are not as interested in buying anything at all and some of the recent auction house changes to commodities have also made it a lot harder for certain strategies although that is definitely very temporary because this change was done primarily to prepare for dragonflight which will have its own fail saves and other gold making methods that'll make things viable again. So this is a temporary so-called gold making lull, but even so, I still have been able to largely maintain enough gold and have extra gold to not only maintain my WoW sub, but also earn you know, enough to get additional balance, balance through just very minimal effort actually. But I do have multiple characters set up However, the majority of my gold making is coming from like a couple of characters. So it's definitely viable to just have one uh, or two characters for this. But if you do want to wait for Dragonflight, it'll be definitely a lot more viable um, and efficient in terms of you know your time, especially at the beginning of an expansion. That's usually a very, very great opportunity to uh, if you actually spend a little bit of extra effort at the beginning of an expansion to unlock a lot of stuff before say some of the other players do. You'll be able to make tons of gold at the start and then thus not have to work as hard later on as well. And speaking of which, if you do have some extra time right now to get and play Shadowlands, even though it is a bit hard to make gold comparatively speaking to say earlier on in the expansion and definitely compared to when Dragonflight comes out, it can definitely still be a very efficient use of your time and actually quite viable indeed to prepare multiple high level characters for Dragonflight, especially with the new profession changes that are coming with that expansion with a lot more variety to professions in that not only can you take well, it's always been two uh, or a maximum of two professions, right? But in Dragonfly, you'll actually be able to specialize even within a profession. So even characters that have the same profession can specialize in different types and thus allow you to cover multiple parts of the market and make even more gold. Now, finally, when it comes to gold making methods and in this guide, I'm going to cover pretty much timeless or uh, methods that keep showing up regardless of patch and expansion, although they might take slightly different forms, for example, the quests like weekly quests that give gold might just come from different reputation uh, factions depending on the expansion or patch right with newer patches unlocking newer you know reputations to farm and to gain favor with and thus the most recent content basically will be providing basically the same avenues to making gold so this first basic method has pretty much been true for the last few expansions and this will actually be a great easy supplement to some of the other 
main methods I will cover later on. But anyhow, this first, again, sort of supplemental method is to do the weekly quest that award gold. Right now, each of these weekly quests awards about nearly 2,000 gold or slightly more than 2,000 gold depending on the quest, with one of them coming from, as I mentioned, the latest patch zone called Xerath Mortis in the most updated version of Shadowlands. And all you really have to do is to hit max level and then the quest givers will automatically in the main city in Shadowlands direct you to this zone as you can see right here. This is the weekly quest called Patterns Within Patterns. It is extremely easy to do every week and can be done once per character and thus also making it beneficial to have multiple characters at max level at least as of Shadowlands to be able to do this. So as you can see here I've earned 2400 gold for just one character and very minimal effort. Um, so again this isn't that much gold in the grand scheme of things for how much a wild token costs but it can definitely add up especially with how easy it is and um, if you have multiple characters as well. And occasionally when you complete this weekly quest you also get an item called Progenitor Essentia which is basically a crafting item that you can just pretty much throw onto the auction house for a few extra hundred gold as a bonus. And now the easiest ways to complete this weekly quest is to actually just uh, first of all, you want to accept the quest before you actually go and do anything else within Xerath Mortis. Otherwise, any of those activities won't count towards this. But at the same time, you can pretty much do any activity including gathering some of the random treasures around the area just by walking around uh, on your mount of course uh, to be able to build up progress for that quest. So it's basically a progress bar. But before you actually start doing anything in Xerath Mortis for the week, you should actually go into Oribos, which is the Shadowlands capital city, to pick up this specific PvP quest called A New Deal. It is located in this part of the map, and you do have to turn on War Mode to be able to do it. Although you can pick it up without having to turn on War Mode, although you can't really progress it if you don't have War Mode on. To turn on War Mode, you simply have to go to your capital city, either Orgrimmar or Stormwind, depending on your fashion, to then just open up your Talent tab and just click on War Mode. Now with the A New Deal quest accepted, as well as War Mode activated, by collecting chests and killing bosses in Xerath Mortis, you'll actually be able to collect an additional quest item called Protoplasmic Thread, which will allow you to progress progress this a new deal quest. And on top of that, this will also allow you to progress the Patterns Within Patterns weekly quest for the gold. The thing with a new deal that you can progress simultaneously with it is that once you complete the quest by collecting 150 protoplasmic threads, which is pretty quick to do, all you have to do is to really gather you know, a small handful of treasures or kill a couple of mini bosses around a zone, many of which you know, lots of groups of players will go around hunting. And once the quest is done, you can actually head back to Ouroboros to turn it in for an instant 35% progression towards your a new deal completion for the week. So again, you have to fill up 100% of the progress bar for Patterns Within Patterns, but by doing a new deal simultaneously with it, you not only can build up Patterns Within Patterns while you're, say, collecting treasures and killing bosses, but once you complete a new deal, you actually get a huge chunk of progression for that week to the weekly quest as well, and thus speeding it up greatly. So for example, since I've already gotten 69% progression towards Patterns Within Patterns, by turning in the a new deal quest, it actually instant completes because 69 plus 35% is actually over 100%, right? Which means after doing this, I can then head back to Xerath Mortis to turn in my weekly quest to get my gold. And some additional ways to continue easily filling up the progress bar for the weekly quest Patterns Within Patterns include killing the world boss Antros at the northernmost part of the map. There is a teleporter if you don't have flying unlocked. And for this, you should usually very easily be able to find a group on their group finder. Even if you have really crappy gear or are undergeared, uh, you'll still be able to be essentially carried through the fight. And also not only unlock 20% completion towards your weekly quest, but also get additional anima rewards, the anima being the Shadowlands expansion's main currency for doing a bunch of different things like mainly your mission table which will actually help you earn significant amounts of gold as well which I'll cover in a little bit. But also if you reach maximum renown at level 80 with your covenant which is basically the faction that you pledge to once you enter the Shadowlands, you actually be able to earn an additional 1600 gold per week using their weekly quest called Replenish the Reservoir which has you collecting um, a thousand anima per week. 500 or half of which can be very easily and quickly obtained by killing the aforementioned world boss in Xerath Mortis, Antros. And additional uh, anima can be earned by completing the weekly quest from Xerath Mortis as well, Patterns Within Patterns, which also gives you gold, and also the anima that you want to use for this 
specific weekly quests. However, you do have to be at maximum level renown at level 80, which is sort of the new reputation system in Shadowlands, to be able to unlock earning gold from this weekly quest. Otherwise, this weekly quest actually rewards the actual renown levels prior to reaching the max level of renown, right? But fortunately, with the latest patch of Shadowlands, you can actually pick up a uh, renown token, so to speak, to instantly boost your renown level to level 60, and thus leaving you with just 20 levels to level up with. Plus, once you hit level 50, you can pick up this token, right? To hit level 60 renown, as you can see here. Um, by the way, this token is bought from this vendor here by the flight path in Orobo. And another thing is, if it's not your first character leveling through the Shadowlands, this option is not available to first time leveling through the Shadowlands from 50 to 60, but anyhow, if it's your second character and beyond, you can actually pick the Threads of Fate option for leveling through the Shadowlands, which is basically doing world quests. And there are these so-called bonus objectives that you can pick up that not only grant you a lot of experience to level up with, but also give you one level of renown every time you complete one, and thus making you get to really close to level 80 renown as you hit level 60. So again, this small segment or interlude was actually covering the Replenish the Reservoir weekly quest, which again is to collect a thousand anima and can be done per week per character for 1600 extra gold fairly easily. And because uh, this can be done simultaneously with Patterns Within Patterns, which is the other weekly quest that'll give you gold from Zareth Mortis, that's why I decided to include this short tutorial for that weekly quest, the second weekly quest, within this part. But anyway, for now, let's go back to how to complete the Patterns Within Patterns weekly quest, which is, again, the first weekly quest I started covering from Zareth Mortis. So first, I mentioned doing the A New Deal, which is yet another weekly quest, the PvP one. Um, the New Deal giving you 35% progression. The World Boss is the second way to help you build the progression bar easily, giving you 20% per week. And then last but not least, the last few dozen of you know, percent completion you'll need to complete patterns within patterns per week can be pretty easily done by not only collecting treasures, they give a very small percentage, but you can also kill some of the random bosses around the area that spawn. But an even more efficient and time-saving way is to just do some of the daily uh, world quests in the zone, namely the cash quests. So these are basically daily puzzle quests that you can unlock very early on into the Zareth Mortis campaign. And they can also be very quickly done just by doing the quick puzzle. Plus, you can use an add-on to do them for you, essentially. Just download the Zareth Mortis Puzzle Helper add-on. You can, again, find it on CurseForge to be able to auto-solve most of these puzzles. Um, the one I'm showing you right here is an example of one where the add-on doesn't help you solve it. Uh, but that's because the puzzle itself is so easy that you don't really need an add-on for it. There are some other puzzles that are a bit more challenging, but again, the add-on will do them for you. And completing each daily world quest in Zareth Mortis whether it be the puzzle one or any of the other ones, will give you an additional 6% completion towards the 100% of your Patterns Within Patterns weekly quests. Meaning that if you actually spend a little bit of time doing the daily puzzles, you'll be able to accrue a fair amount of progress just by doing that you know, every day on each character. So just the gold that you'll be making from these two weekly quests alone will be about roughly 4,000 gold per character per week, which per month would be about 16,000 gold per character, which isn't actually too bad considering how easy these weekly quests are um, to do, and also the fact that you can sort of stack them together and progress them at roughly the same time. And these are just a couple of the supplemental ways that you can make gold with, and not even the main methods for making tons more gold, and also at relatively low effort. But before we get into that, for yet another super low effort, arguably even easier than the aforementioned weekly quests for making some extra gold, is to do the mission tables within your covenant. So each covenant will have its own version of it. They're roughly the same, with the Night Fae probably having the easiest time in terms of having the best, most powerful followers, in that you don't have to actually level up a lot of your followers to be able to complete most of the missions. But essentially, this is just like a sort of side um, mini game within the game and then you can actually spend the aforementioned anima on these missions to earn rewards like gold with that being the main reward that you'll be spending your anima on. And another great perk of the mission table is that even when you're not actually playing the game on your computer, say if you're outside, as long as you have the WoW companion app on your phone, you'll be able to access the mission table and then send your followers on missions as well as collect completed missions 
and thus allowing you to make some extra gold that way. And actually, this is a lot of gold if you keep rolling through the missions. Say, for example, every few hours, I like to check my phone when I'm not busy and actually just refresh my missions because usually within a few hours, there will be new missions, again, per character. And so again, the more max level characters you have for this, the better. And now, to be able to set up the mission table, you actually have to not only, um, obviously you'll pledge a covenant as soon as you hit or enter the Shadowlands, and then within your covenant, once you get enough anima, I believe it's a thousand anima, you need to go to the relevant Sanctum Upgrades NPC to actually build a mission table to be able to start using it. And um, secondly, you actually need followers, uh, like champions sort of for your uh, mission table. And those can be recruited mostly just through your um, your Covenant Sanctum, just by having your Renown at a higher level. So again, once you hit level 50, you can actually buy the token that I talked about before to hit instantly um, level 60 Renown, right? And then as you level up and just do a few story quests or campaign quests if you need to um, and get to, you know, like say level 70-ish or higher Renown, you'll have unlocked all the followers. And not only that, you also get EXP tokens for your followers to be able to boost them up to really high levels. Now the strategy for this is to, and this is very important, and is to use your, and be sure to use your EXP tokens on one follower uh, first. For example, for the Night Fae, it's Nia, that'll be your very first follower. So before you recruit any other followers, don't click on the explanation marks and just complete the quest to recruit the new followers. Just only recruit Nia at first. Power level her up using the tokens to level 50 plus. And what this will do is allow all of your uh, non-champion followers, your troop members, to get their level boosted to the same level as your main uh, champion, which is Nia at this point, right? Which is your only champion. Because if you have multiple followers that you recruit, the troop levels will average out. And so if you have a lot of low level uh, champions, the troop levels will also get, you know, averaged down. But sort of a workaround around this, almost an exploit, uh, is to just boost up your first champion, again, Nia. Uh, and by just doing that, without having any other champions, your troops will actually get boosted to the same level as her, in this case, level 50 plus. And once you recruit, once you do that, and then later on start recruiting your other, you know, champions, um, the, the troop levels are not going to be decreased. They're just going to stay as high as they were. So this will allow you to really power through a lot of the missions, regardless of even if a lot of the higher level missions come up. Now, mission table goal results can kind of vary per day. Some days you might get just a few gold quests, netting you about a thousand gold per day. Usually it's more, um, and I'm being a bit conservative here, but on the higher end, it can be about at um, 2,500 to even 3,000 gold per day. I've seen being reported and I've seen on my own characters as well. Although the higher end would usually come up as you record, uh, recruit excuse me, more followers and also level up your mission table by completing the uh, sort of main story missions that allow you to level up, so to speak, your mission table. Anyhow, the amount of gold just one character can earn per month using just the methods I've described so far, and again, these are very easy methods, and I haven't even gone into professions yet, we can expect up to about 66,000 gold, again roughly, because it sort of depends on how lucky you get with the mission table, but I think 65 to 66,000 is pretty realistic just from these methods alone, again, per character, which means as long as you have um, three characters at least, you'll be able to afford a wild token using just these methods. Uh, at least on US servers. On EU, raw gold is a bit less viable because the WoW tokens are just more expensive overall, but the raw gold missions and like weekly quests amounts are not different between NA and EU. However, on EU, using the auction house and making money with it will be more lucrative compared to NA. So it kind of balances out in that way, although obviously the EU's WoW tokens are more expensive. Now for yet another bonus and relatively easy method as well, we have the Covenant Callings. Although I don't do these anymore, but especially if you're starting out and don't yet really have your profession set up or need a bit of gold to you know get that started, these can be a pretty easy way to earn a couple of thousand gold again per day, and you can actually stack them up up to three at a time. So you can actually stack up three days worth and then get all three done in the same day Day, especially if sometimes the covenant callings will come from the same uh, reputation faction, you can actually get the quest done in the same zone and actually double dip on the same calling and complete two of these daily quests at the same time and thus making things a lot more efficient if you do it that way. Now another main reason that I wanted to bring this method up is to lead into potential 
goal making, especially supplemental methods similar to the aforementioned ones that are going to be coming up in the next expansion, Dragonflight. In my opinion, it is extremely likely for Dragonflight to also introduce these similar types of quests, like the callings from these different reputations. In fact, we already know and there is confirmation that not only are there going to be major factions that you can gain favor with outside of your, you know, your main alliance and horde factions, right, um, in Dragonflight, but also you'll be able to earn renown with them, very similar to how you do in Shadowlands, and thus they're probably going to be reputation-based world quests and also things like these meta daily or even weekly quests or both where you need to complete a certain number of quests or world quests to be able to earn your daily or weekly cash which usually contain a couple of thousand gold. And also since very similar systems were also present in the previous couple of expansions Battle for Razzroth and Legion, I do again think that there's a very high likelihood of these methods returning in Dragonfly as viable and especially supplemental ways of making fairly easy gold and can be scaled up per character as well. And now moving on to the primary methods for making gold in World of Warcraft, you'll be utilizing your two professions that you can learn out of 11 uh, gold making professions. And there's also secondary professions, but essentially you can actually pick two out of the 11 primary professions. And these include herbalism, mining, skinning. These are the so-called gathering professions. And usually people will take two gathering professions and they want to focus solely on gathering. And besides those, there are also eight different so-called crafting professions, namely alchemy, blacksmithing, enchanting, engineering, inscription, jewel crafting, leatherworking, and tailoring. And of these, you can also take up to two. Any of the professions that you want to mix, you can have two of the primary ones. So you can take one gathering, one crafting, double gathering, or two crafting uh, professions. And then there are also secondary professions. These are not usually as good for making gold, but the ones that do kind of help and matter are fishing and cooking. Cooking being a pretty good supplemental method for making gold. And also fishing, if you have a bit of downtime and extra time, if you want to like Netflix and chill, can be a decent one as well. And now these secondary professions don't compete with the two slots maximum that you have for your primary professions. So you can learn them in addition to your main two professions that you have. And of these, cooking is definitely good to have on one max level character so that you can actually craft the recipes from the latest expansion sort of as a side income source, especially if you want to play that character and will be thus killing things and getting those cooking ingredients to be able to craft these extra items, but it's definitely an optional thing. And now as for the primary professions, I'm definitely not going to cover all of them as that'll take way too long to an already long video. So instead, I'll link some wowhead guides below for you to be able to learn about each and every of these professions and be able to pick from there. But also in this guide, I'll be picking uh, or revealing some of my top choices for easy gold making as well. Not only in the Shadowlands, but also what I think about uh, what'll be good and meta in Dragonflight as well. And with that, starting with one of the main methods that a lot of people, in fact, actually use to make gold. And this is an extremely simple one, and that is to do gathering with two gathering professions in usually the latest and most lucrative expansion zones. But first, a quick word of caution, and that is that this strategy is actually not very viable, at least right now in Shadowlands, due to the recent auction house changes making it so that uh, gathering and not only that, but basically all commodities like crafting materials and uh, things that are consumable like potions and things like that and cooking foods and ingredients have all become connected region wide. For example, the entirety of North America will be sharing all of the auctions for these types of uh, consumable items and thus the prices of these have largely dropped overall due to how overly available they are and how many people have been listing them again onto these entire geographical regions of the auction house. With this, a slightly added benefit is that these consumables also sell a bit quicker because of the increased number of buyers in addition to sellers but this mainly applies to say more niche and um, old expansion items that were or had been a bit harder to move prior to this change. Uh, but for newer content, it doesn't really matter because uh, even without the realm merge with the auction houses, these consumables, especially if they're from the, uh, from the latest expansion, would sell pretty quickly anyway, so it doesn't really matter if they're just that much quicker. However, it's also extremely likely, in my opinion, that this is merely a very short-term so-called gathering lull because the auction houses didn't actually come with any profession changes, with the profession changes being planned for and coming 
in Dragonfly in a couple of months, right? So with Dragonfly, this will definitely be alleviated. And for example, even if the crafting, you know, material and uh, consumable prices don't go up, you know, a lot significantly because they're still going to be shared in Dragonfly. The, um, the new specializations that come with the gathering professions and just how, uh, for example, rare certain things can be, these are all in uh, Blizzard's control, right? For example, they can make certain types of gathering materials more rare and or also requiring uh, deeper levels of specializations in a gathering profession and again these specializations and leveling up a profession so to speak and progressing it is one of the new features of dragonflight right so with more experienced gatherers and those who have put in the time and effort to increase the level of their gathering so to speak they're um, going to be for example more easily able to gather these rare materials that are also still going to be seeing a lot of demand right and thus the prices are likely going to be higher and or they're going to be specialization choices where these um, gatherers can actually gather more quickly and more efficiently. For example, have these multi-proc like critical strike type mechanics where they craft multiple materials in one go and be able to sell larger bulk. That is also another possibility in addition to what I just mentioned about the rarity part. Now going back to Shadowlands and also past trends for a little bit in terms of what you can expect to earn from a gathering session and how much, for example, gold per hour one can expect. Based on some of my research on the latest gathering statistics, of course, before the recent uh, devastating auction house change, you can actually expect about 15,000 to 30,000 gold per hour, again, from Xerath Mortis, which is the latest um, Shadowlands zone. And again, these strategies typically work within the latest zone that has been released or a couple of zones in the expansion because you usually be getting the materials that'll be useful for you know whatever latest content there is and that would usually come from the newest zones right and one cool thing that one can actually do with gathering and this isn't really possible with crafting which i'll cover in just a bit albeit um, crafting can usually get you really uh, great profits and usually even more efficient profits. But anyhow, with gathering though, what you can do is front load a lot of your goal making to whatever sessions you have more time on your hands with, um, or you just wanna, you know, happen to wanna spend that time doing some or watching some YouTube on the side while you do some mindless gathering. Essentially, what I mean is you can spend, for example, for the month, you can spend, you know, a few hours of non stop. Uh, farming and sell a whole bunch of you know crafting materials for a whole bunch of gold and not have to worry about you know gold making for the rest of the month right that's what I mean by front loading which again is not really uh, nearly as doable with crafting and is a perk of uh, gathering in that you can sort of schedule your time and uh, make time whenever you want to spend on gathering and then not have to worry about you know the gold making later on when for for example you might be more busy and the general strategy is to take the professions mining and herbalism although skinning is the other gathering profession and can be viable as well but that actually involves a bit more um, active playing so to speak which is you have to kill beasts specifically to be able to skin them which could work really well if you have like a stronger character and can AOE things down quickly but if you really want something that's super mindless and not even involving much combat if any um, you can take the two gathering professions again mining and herbalism you can actually uh, do both, right? And have both and just go around the map. Um, a druid will be great for this because you can enter uh, travel form, either the flying or the ground one instantly to make you move faster. And you can just look for the herbalism or mining nodes on your mini map to be able to loot them. And that's basically what you do. Just do these circuits around, you know, in this case, Xerath Mortis, um, which is previously the best place to do this at. Nowadays in Shadowlands, because the auction house change is not as viable, uh, but in Dragonflight, there's definitely going to be some new gathering routes, of course, new consumables with the new expansion, new crafting materials, and also new zones where uh, people also release guides for the best routes to take. So generally what you'll do is, for example, with your Druid, you'll just look up what routes are good for you know mining and herbalism and just fly around those routes in circles and just keep gathering stuff or if you want to actually play some of the game you can also do that uh, in the latest zone you can actually just 
progress through the zone, do whatever quest you want to do. At the same time, for example, earlier I talked about the patterns within patterns weekly quests in Zerith Mortis. Um, for example, in the future, if there and there probably will be uh, missions and quests that you can do and even like weekly quests and stuff for increased rewards that you can do in the latest zones and having crafting will be a great bonus as you go around completing those quests and also gathering stuff while you're at it and thus making your goal making even more efficient by stacking all these methods together. All in all, I definitely expect gathering, especially double gathering to return to viability in Dragonflight. Although right now, if you do want to play Shadowlands, I would recommend crafting instead or just leveling a bunch of alts and doing the other methods I've talked about like the mission table and some of the weekly quests. Just by having more alts can help you prepare and set up things for optimal goal making in Dragonflight anyway. But besides that, I also like to cover my preferred method for making gold, which is to utilize crafting professions, more specifically double crafting, which can definitely trump even gathering when it comes to efficient uses of your time. Although crafting typically also requires a little bit more setup than gathering, with gathering pretty much being that you can just pick them up and start you know, picking up the herbs and ore immediately. Although in Dragonfly, there might be additional specialization to progress through. But even with that, you can start gathering right away. There's not really much of a barrier. Whereas with crafting, you usually have to not only level up your profession, but oftentimes the best recipes that allow you to craft items that sell, um, you know, for the highest profits and have perhaps less competition due, due to this barrier to entry are usually gated behind certain reputations that you have to gain favor with by doing a lot of their quests and so on and so forth. But once you do set them up, it becomes greatly worthwhile and also extremely time efficient, thus allowing you to do other things besides playing World of Warcraft should that be what you want to do, right? And still oftentimes make even more gold than if you were to have the gathering professions. Now this isn't to say that crafting is necessarily always better than gathering. Again, there is usually more of a setup that you have to do. Um, it's a bit more complicated as well, although I still think that it's fairly intuitive, especially compared to what uh, or how things are in some other games. And that's why crafting is my preferred gold making method and also a tried and true method that I've been able to make lots of um, gold with consistently over uh, the span of basically every WoW expansion, right? I played since vanilla. I was kind of a noob in vanilla, so I didn't really make gold efficiently. I actually did a lot of farming, but starting from Burning Crusade and making like potions and flasks, and then moving on to Wrath of the Lich King, where I actually just had enchanting and alchemy, I made a ton of gold through crafting and also by having multiple characters from pretty much this first expansion, Burning Crusade, all the way until now, the Shadowlands. And with that, my main crafting strategy, and by the way, I do have several max level crafting professions across several of my characters, but again, this main strategy doesn't actually involve that many. In fact, it's completely viable with just two, or if you have two characters, three or four professions. But really, we're gonna be focusing on the gear crafting professions, and those are just the three, blacksmithing, leatherworking, and tailoring. The reason I chose to focus on these professions compared to even the other crafting professions is that these are fairly low maintenance and are also highly lucrative because they're largely not really affected by the auction house merge within the regions because gear is actually not and still not shared um, region wide whereas only commodities and things like crafting materials and crafted consumables like potions are shared but again gear is not shared which means that they're only sellable on your specific server. And a large benefit to this is that not only will it help you maintain your profit margins, and especially since commodities are even cheaper now, so you can actually craft for a bit cheaper and just take a very small price hit usually on your crafted gear and still be able to make a decent profit out of it. And secondly, because you're only selling on your server, um, your things are not gonna sell as quickly which means, and that's not necessarily a bad thing because that's like the most you can do and yet you can still make enough gold or actually a lot of gold and not have to constantly have to keep crafting and reposting and just, you know, constantly use the auction house or just craft stuff. You can kind of just make several items. Um, basically, in my example, I just craft all the available um, items in every gear slot across the three crafting professions uh, for gear, right? And then I'll just list them and then I can just log off. And then I can check back, uh, for example, after work or like after several hours. I'll usually check once um, per day or maybe twice per day. And that's usually enough for me to get 
you know, quite a few seals while not having to constantly play the game and monitor, you know, crafting or um, the auction house. And so if we compare this strategy to other professions involving crafting consumable items like again food or enchants or potions, namely from cooking which again is a secondary profession so you can actually take it as a third profession, but um, enchanting and alchemy are good examples of professions that mainly involve crafting consumables which again is greatly affected by the recent auction house change meaning that basically anything you craft and list on the auction house will sell instantly. But you know while that can be good if people actually have the time to sit around and just keep crafting stuff endlessly um, with very low profit margins at that because of how many consumables are flooding the market right albeit how quickly they're selling this actually favors people who are um, or have time on their hands to just spam craft to eke out these small margins and just keep crafting you know for a long time rather than my preferred strategy of crafting several larger ticket items right big ticket items like gear and just sort of setting and forgetting them on the auction house and then coming back a few hours later or say like after work or school or whatever or even after you go out for fun or do something else play a different game come back collect your thousands or tens of thousands of gold recraft some of the items that have sold and also relist some of the options that didn't sell. That's, in my opinion, a much more um, sustainable, it keeps me a lot more sane strategy, and is yet extremely profitable right now, in Shadowlands at least. And I also predict that in Dragonfly, it'll be even more lucrative with how much more important gear crafting will actually become with some of the Dragonflight crafted gear being able to compete with some of the high-end um, gear that you can be or that you can obtain from PvP and PvE. And another thing about taking double crafting professions that a lot of people don't consider is that, for example, once you've crafted everything you can and listed them on the auction house, if you have extra time on your hands, you can still do farming even without having um, your uh, gathering professions, right? You can still just kill stuff and be able to farm that way, albeit having the um, gathering professions can make things a bit more efficient because you'll be also seeing your, say, mining nodes and herbalism nodes or be able to skin beasts while you farm. But again, even without gathering professions, um, and on top of having your crafting professions, right? Um, you'll still be able to farm stuff provided that you can just kill stuff and you can even join custom games. For example, like two times four farms are pretty popular. Basically, like you'll be joining these large groups where they'll just be farming a bunch of fast respawn mobs. And I think that this will likely make a return in Dragonflight. Although again, with the new auction house and shared commodity changes, I don't know if this will be as viable as before, but even if it's not as good in Dragonflight, this type of method isn't one of my main preferred methods for making gold anyway, as I'll be relying on mainly say crafting, and I recommend you do so as well, to make most of your gold or take your double gathering professions, which I definitely think will be still viable, if not more viable, and dragonflight. Now as for my specific crafting strategy and the exact items that I actually craft, it's actually a lot more straightforward than it seems and the strategy is very similar to gathering as well in that you basically just focus on the latest patch, latest expansion, the latest zone. Usually these latest zones will come with uh, reputation vendors that'll give you uh, recipes unlocked at a certain reputation level and again reputation can be gained through doing their quests um, and like daily um, quests, world quests, the weekly quests, like patterns within patterns, in this case for Xerath Mortis, which again is the latest zone in Shadowlands. And for learning the crafting recipes for these specific pieces of gear, first of all, you can actually unlock the base levels of them from your um, trainer. Mainly in the Shadowlands, if you want to learn the latest recipes, or the Shadowlands recipes rather, you can actually just um, craft as you level up your profession and I'll link some profession leveling guides in the description as well but essentially you just keep crafting and leveling up your profession and keep learning new recipes from the same trainers and again that's for the base level of gear which is sort of the entry level to Shadowlands however as the new patches came out in Shadowlands and the same trends have actually happened for the previous few expansions and that with each new patch the um, item levels that are going to be dropping from end game content are also going to increase and so are that of crafted gear, right? And usually to upgrade your recipes, to get the newer recipes, to craft even better gear to match the new endgame content with each patch, um, you'll be unlocking certain recipes as well in addition to what you already have from the reputation vendors. And so specifically for the latest patch of Shadowlands and since the latest zone is Xerath Mortis, all you need to do is to first learn the base level uh, crafted gear 
from your Ouroboros trainers. And then all you need to do is to gain reputation with, again, the latest faction, which is in Xerus Mortis. Once you gain enough reputation and yet to honor reputation, again, by doing the quests and also the weekly quest patterns and patterns, you'll be able to unlock a recipe that allow you to craft an additional sort of supplement item that will allow you to, um, once you use that item when crafting the gear, upgrade the item level to the latest available level from the crafted gear. So basically all I do is craft a whole set between uh, tailoring, blacksmithing, and leatherworking the entire set of gear using this token to upgrade the item level of each piece of gear and I'll just craft one of each piece and list them all in the auction house. And that's the strategy. And of course if you only have one max level character you'll only be able to take two out of these three um, gear crafting professions. And so of those I would actually recommend taking leatherworking and tailoring. Uh, although it sort of depends on your server as well, but you generally can't go wrong with these two because especially leatherworking covers two types of gear, male and leather. Um, so more characters will be able to use them and thus buy your gear, right? And tailoring is a pretty good one as well because you'll be able to craft not only things like bags, um, that can also supplement your income, but also um, cloaks that you can craft are also usable by every single class, right? And as for blacksmithing, I had really liked it in past expansions, especially for its ability to craft weapons in addition to um, armor. But in Shadowlands, you can only craft like super basic weapons and not have them scale up in quality with the end game content, which is a shame, but blacksmithing is still actually quite viable. And if I'm not mistaken, weapon crafting will be making a return in Dragonflight, so that should definitely make blacksmithing extremely viable. In fact, it'll probably be my top choice for a crafting profession in Dragonflight, followed by leatherworking and then tailoring. Now for some additional changes and also even supplemental methods and additional methods for making gold in Dragonflight, First of all, again, you'll be able to specialize in a profession and thus giving you, especially if you spend more time and effort at the beginning of the expansion, an edge potentially over other players who perhaps might not have put that much effort into specializing or perhaps on your server, um, different players might specialize in different things. So it might be good to find your specific niche and not have to compete with other players as much as you can. And thus, the ability to have uh, specializations also makes it so that each person uh, or each character, even if they take the same professions, can do drastically different things, right? Or can uh, craft drastically different things because of having different specializations and thus making it uh, more viable as well to have probably multiple alts with different not only professions, but even crafting specializations uh, of the same profession. And now also more specifically, specializing and progressing through and advancing your specialization actually involves sort of leveling up and building experience. Um, this will probably come through not only crafting, but perhaps different types of activities in the game as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But for example, if you want to actually, uh, like myself, I'd actually want to play Diablo 4 as my main game. Um, and this is a game that'll come out next year, which means with Dragonflight coming out later this year, I'll be able to devote some of my time to setting up some of these professions and playing the game more in general before, again, my main game, Diablo 4, comes out to be able to hopefully accrue more battle net balance, set up a uh, somewhat passive system that I can spend minimal amounts of time and effort on even while or even after Diablo 4 comes out and I start playing that as my main game, I'll still hopefully be able to, in Dragonflight, maintain my gold and battle net balance income with minimal effort. So that's my goal and I'll definitely be putting out uh, additional videos for my strategies when I do so. And speaking of which, another major feature and new gold making feature coming with Dragonflight are crafting orders. These are basically like listing auctions and auctions are still going to be in the game. Although crafting items are where you can actually um, request for people to craft stuff for you. Meaning that when you see people put up a crafting order, you can actually go to the auction house or the crafting table, whatever the interface is, and actually fulfill orders for other people and thus make gold that way. Now on the surface, this doesn't seem like as passive of an option compared to uh, listing auctions. However, do keep in mind that auctions will still be in the game, so you can still craft your armor pieces and whatnot, most likely, and list them on the auction house. Although crafting orders will become where um, it's mostly more likely going to be used for really high ticket and high-end items, 
or they're gonna be super limited and rare um, reagents used to craft them and even some that are say bind on pickup that can be provided by you know either side the requester or the crafter um, but my prediction is that with crafting orders you don't have to like sit around and just camp out on the auction house or like the crafting table and just keep you know fulfilling orders to make gold at a slow trickle rather i think what this will be is you'll be huge ticket items and you'll bring super rare items or super rare crafting materials to it which you can just you know maybe do on a daily cooldown or whatever it is maybe it'll be rewards from say a weekly quest i think that's highly likely bring these super rare items over craft a couple of these and make a ton of gold and you can actually return later on um you know when your cooldown refreshes or when you're able to collect more of these rare uh, crafting materials and also my hope is that since it's been announced that the mission tables will be retired or severely nerfed with the advent of dragonflight um, i hope that Blizzard will actually introduce some kind of new system for making gold with the WoW Companion app, again, on your phone, right? So whether it be something that'll uh, actually just be the crafting orders or give you the ability to list auctions in addition to be able to or being able to buy them, which is actually possible right now, but you can only buy op auctions and also view your auctions. You can't actually list and sell stuff, at least right now. But hopefully they'll bring some way to as they have over the past few expansions, right? Make some extra gold even on the go with your smartphone, which also makes sense from like a business standpoint for Activision Blizzard because that'll sort of keep people busy and thinking about the game and also more importantly wanting to keep subscribed for an extra avenue to say make some gold, right? And so those are basically my thoughts about how to make gold in Dragonflight in a easy, low effort and sustainable way while building a battle net balance, maintaining a WoW sub, and essentially playing Activision Blizzard games for free if you do the strategies right. Um, and these are fairly simple strategies as well. And I also share some of my current strategies in Shadowlands for how I'm able to not only keep up my WoW sub, but also make tons of extra battle net balance. Um, and also, you know, the fact that I haven't spent a single dime on any Blizzard game for the past few years, ever since the WoW token came out. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this guide and found it helpful. Let me know what you think about it. If I've missed anything, if you have other uh, strategies to share, what you think will be coming with Dragonflight, whether it'll be easier or perhaps even harder to make gold, and also what upcoming Blizzard games you were the most excited for. Again, personally, I am anticipating Diablo 4 to play as my main game, which I'll be making guides for as well on this channel. But before that, I'll definitely be sharing what I do in uh, maybe towards the end of Dra uh, Shadowlands, which it is right now, but mainly in Dragonflight as well. So stay tuned for that. And with that, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.